ever worked with that one person who you know is an asshole and you know is intolerable and you could easily just leave them, but if you did, you'd lose out on a lot of opportunities and the chance to be, say that you worked with that person? That's pretty much Steve Jobs in a way, directed by Danny Boyle, starring Michael Fassbender, Kate Winslet, Jeff Daniels, and Seth Rogen. And boy, oh boy, is this movie intense. Yep, if you were expecting to see the good and warm side of Steve Jobs, you are not going to see that at all. Oh yes, this is written by Aaron Sorkin and is based off the book of the same name, the biography by Walter Isaacson. And let me just tell you something right now. If you're expecting a full-on biography from beginning to end, you're not necessarily going to get that. You're only going to get free segments out of his life. You're going to get from 1984, the presentation of the Macintosh computer, 1988, when Steve Jobs is presenting his computer from his company Next, which was formed after he got fired from Apple, kind of a spoiler, but at the same time, if you know his history, that's not really a surprise, and then in 1998, when he's presenting the iMac, and when he returns back to Apple as CEO, fun fact, he returned before 1998. So this movie, it is just absolutely incredible, I mean... The performances by Michael Fassbender as Steve Jobs. Now, let me just say this first about Michael Fassbender. This reminds me of Russell Crowe as John Nash in A Beautiful Mind in the sense that he doesn't exactly look like Steve Jobs. He doesn't exactly sound like Steve Jobs, but God damn it, he gets the personality down right to right down to the vowels, honestly. I mean, this guy, he's an asshole, but he has a sense of direction. Like, he's mean, but he knows what he wants to do, like... Everything has to be exact. Like, if it's not exact, it's a failure. You know, his arguments with Steve Wozniak throughout the film about mentioning the Apple II team are just so intense. It's like, you think he should do it, but he, but spoiler alert, he really doesn't. And the reason why, he wants to promote his new product and doesn't want to be reminded of the past. And that's, in one in, in some ways, that's a good thing. But in another way, you're just kind of discrediting the people who really built your company. You know, Seth Rogen as uh, Steve Wozniak, the co-founder of Apple, I'm surprised he was able to pull it down because normally Seth Rogen plays kind of like a a stoner in a lot of comedy movies with James Franco and writes a lot of those types of movies with Evan Goldberg. However, he, thanks to Danny Boyle's direction and great writing from Aaron Sorkin, and even a good job from Seth Rogen, the acting went down pretty good for his part. Now, Kate Winslet as Steve Jobs' assistant, I, I honestly couldn't recognize that was Kate Winslet. Like, if I had to remind myself that was Kate Winslet, I honestly, like, she was probably the best performance in this movie. Like, not saying that everyone else's performances were bad, but goddamn was she great in this movie. I mean, how the hell could she put up with an asshole like Steve Jobs? But I guess if you want to be with an icon, you got to deal with their shit. And then you have Jeff Daniels as, as uh, John Scully, who was a former CEO of Pepsi and who ended up running Apple for some time. And he introduced us to things like the Newton, which, as we all know, that failed. And he fired Steve Jobs, but he would eventually be later fired himself. And then throughout the movie, it also talks about the relationship between Jobs and his daughter Lisa, which he denies, and I'm not going to go too far into that, but let's just say the arguments and some of the statistics Jobs comes up with in this movie are questionable at best. Also, another thing I like about this movie is that they don't actually show us the presentation. Instead, they show us what goes behind the scenes because we could already look that up on YouTube, the presentation itself. We can, And plus, they tell us news clips about kind of what happens. But, I mean, you kind of see how a text or any kind of demonstration works, really. It's hectic. It's crazy. It's last minute. I mean, you know, it's not a common, steady world when it comes to presenting. Now, one of my only flaws about this movie is kind of the pacing towards, I would say, about the third act, of this, the second and third act of this movie. The first act is perfectly paced, but the second and third acts, well, I can understand the third act better, but the second act, eh. I mean, and personally, for my pick, I would have personally done his whole life, but I guess I like Danny Boyle's decision to do the just three acts. I mean, it works either way. Overall, Steve Jobs is probably one of the best movies I've seen this year, next to Bridge of Spies by Steven Spielberg, which I will review later, but I'm going to give this movie a 9.5 out of 10. So, Telgen, this is a White Rice sign-off. Bye.